Hello, um, my name is Ole. I'm working at Deutsche Telekom. Uh, I'm working in the product design department. And we're here in Berlin uh, working together with the T Innovation Labs, which is the innovation department of Deutsche Telekom. So uh, what we're doing here, we're um, developing new products uh, and bringing them into, into Deutsche Telekom. And um, we're also working for, for internal and external customers. So we're doing projects with, uh, for example, companies like, like Mozilla. So we did part of the development of, of some of their, um, their, uh, their uh, uh, OS, the, the Mozilla OS. We're working for internal projects and we're working with, with partnerships. Uh, for example, here is with the Tolino tablet. Um, we're working mostly agile, so we're like completely working in sprint uh, models, working, working in agile teams. And um, s most of the projects we do here are all already uh, also working like, um, like internal startups. So we start up a project um, and we bring it to a certain level, launch it, and then, um, yeah, this, uh, th all this is done, done in, a, in a startup way. And I'm going to talk about how we do this and um, share some of the experiences that, we, that I have there. Um, so I think one of the problems of a, of a big company is that big companies tend to be very slow. And um, yeah, probably you all know this quote today, it's not, not the big fish that eating the small fish, it's the, the fast fish that eats the, eats the slow fish. And the question is, if you're a big fish and you're slow, how can you still compete in, in, in these markets where, where, where speed is, is very important? And I think one of the key factors is that you allow certain pro projects to be faster than the company itself. And this goes through entrepreneurship, through allowing lean startup or startup projects within a company. Um, so this is we here in Berlin, and the rest is Deutsche Telekom. So <laughs> probably you read it in the invitation. Deutsche Telekom has around 280,000 um, employees here in Germany, and we're, I don't know, maybe 1,000 people here in Berlin. So we're really like a small part of it, um, small part of, of Deutsche Telekom, but we're working agile, we're fast, and we're doing entrepreneurship and uh, using startup method methods to make the company faster. Um, so how we do that? Um, you probably know the Tolino tablet, so this is uh, the the, the uh, competitor to Amazon. It's it's I think Germany is one of the the very few markets that that has really like a like a competition on on the e-reader and tablet market uh, for for booksellers to to Amazon. And this was one of the projects we started here in Berlin. We um, we we started the, the this tablet project here and brought it to a certain level and launched it. So generally how, how uh, pro uh, projects work here, we start up, we do an agile product development, and at some point we, we launch, and then it's, it's handed over to, to business units, to, to our clients that then continue the development and do the life cycle management. So it's not that we are like creating startups and uh, uh, working in them, it's more that we we do the development, we um, launch it, we, we launch an MVP, and at some point we hand this over. Um, how do we how do we do that? We have, have several project phases that we go through until launch, and um, it's it's more or less that we start by creating a target picture. So either it is that. Um, there comes a demand from from internal of, of Deutsche Telekom, so uh, there's there's a demand coming to us, and we start the development uh, here, or we we start up here, or it is that that is created within uh, Telecom Innovation Labs that mm -hmm. someone has an idea, and we we start creating this target picture, we start prototyping, we get a go buy in from 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 management, and then we start this uh, build, measure, learn cycle develop the product product until the, the very first launch. And at some point, we have the transition and launch phase where we hand it over 
and um, start a new project. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, so when you start up, and I think this is something where we're in a really advantage because we're a big company. Um, we can use a lot of insights that are already there. So um, first thing is, if we ask ourselves, what do our user wants? We have, we have tons of user research. We have, um, we have the infrastructure to do very quick um, workshops with, with customers. We can do kind of studies to find out how do, how do certain features um, perform on the market, what, what do the people want. And um, yeah, we also have the, our market segmentation, so we can have a look at that and think about to whom do we want to, to market it and um, what do these, these potential customers really want. Second is um, what are the competitors, what are they doing, um, where do we want to position the product in the market. Also for that, there's, there's a lot of stuff if you're in a big company, um, you can, can use a lot of these insights and um, build, build up on that. There's benchmarks, there's, there's all this market research. If you're starting a product in a, a company or from within a company, you're, you're a startup, you have to have a very close look on what is actually the, the internal view. I think that's something that we've seen in your uh, speech as well that you have to convince your company to do it. You're not a startup. You're not like in on a green, green grass. You can not start from zero. You have to really convince the the company that it's worth investing in it, and that's why you have to have a very close look on the company strategy. What is already on the roadmap? Um, which existing guidelines do you have to follow um, in order to to be successful and to get really the buy-in from 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 the um, from the executives. And the fourth thing, which I think is really important, and this is something, to me it's a bit more like the, the soft factors. What is your vision? What is really like the, the thing where you want to be special? And um, my boss always says something, he calls it sparkles. And I think this is like really having a closer look on some of the features, where can you do things in a way that you haven't seen? Where can you do things better? Um, yet, like thinking about what, what can be this one special thing and also bringing that over if you want to, if you present your product and if you want to start up, um, yeah. Before we start prototyping, I think the, the most important and crucial part, so I'm, I'm a designer, I'm coming from the design, so uh, I've I think this is really important that in the beginning you, oops, sorry, in the beginning you really think about how you want to set up the product. So taking the, the first design decisions and taking the time to think about this is really important. Setting up an infrastructure, thinking about how should the product look and feel and like doing a, a concrete decision path and fixing some things in the beginning is, is so important because it's, it's paying off really in the, in the end. I worked on projects where we did this very well and I worked on product, projects where we really failed in this and the difference is huge. So if you take the wrong decisions regarding uh, interaction paradigms, if you take the wrong decisions on design, on, on information architecture, this will fall on your feet in the end and it's going to hurt badly because you will change a lot of things you have already implemented later. So I think the more time you invest in the beginning, the better it is in the end. Um, so prototyping. We start generally, before we really start the development, we start prototyping. We do iterations, we do variations and then we do lean testing. So it's not like huge user testing, but getting 10 people and showing them the different variations, letting them play around and trying to learn from that and finding out what works, what doesn't work, um, so that we can start with a more or less fixed um, UI, UX vision and not, not like change things too much afterwards. Um, 
There's a lot of tools for that. Um, generally, we use those three, and they are they are very fine. I mean, uh, Envision is one that is really simple to use. Pixate also works fine. All of those you can also use for free if you don't need like uh, uh, huge huge licenses. And um, Framer is a bit more if you have people with basic coding skills, you can use that. The other two are really drag and drop, and it's it's easy to learn. So especially in the early phases where you don't have a budget, maybe you don't have a big team, and you have maybe one designer, you can do really good prototypes without having any, any coders on board. So this is something uh, that's really, really valuable. So um, let's say we, we found out the prototyping, uh, so we did the prototyping, we did first testing, and we got the buy-in of, of, um, of the company to really start the project. The first thing is that yeah, you want to define what's your prioritization and maybe think about what can be your MVP. If you're in a big company like Deutsche Telekom, the MVP is sometimes a bit difficult because due to the, the culture of, of big companies, it's, it's difficult to say we launch an MVP because there's, there's internal expectation. You have a lot of regulation also. You have data security. You have all these, these, these different... Uh, steps you have to go through to be able to launch and then you have external expectations. So if you're a small startup and you, then you can launch something and learn from it and then nobody will realize but if you're a big company, press is going to see that and it's going to be horrible. But you have a big advantage if you're a big uh, company, you can do internal launches. You have so many employees so you can do internal betas and that's generally what we do. We do not launch externally launch internally and we find like 20 colleagues 50 colleagues that can use the product and learn from that so that's that's really a good tool so we use the mvp not for the things we launch to the customers but to define what our first internal launches are and then generally our products that we really launch to customers are a bit more mature than um, the normal mvp um, Setting up the team. So what I have learned from the product uh, projects that we did so far that, I mean, for really important is you, have, you should have the core competencies within your team. Um, that's mainly, I think, user experience development and then for sure you need some, some business development people. But um, what you do not need is all these internal service providers and you can, can use those it it's, will work quite well. What you shouldn't do is like using external, uh, using internal uh, things like like payment or um, authentication things where you have to compete on the roadmap. So this is something that that I've learned. If you need something like backend technology or stuff like that, you shouldn't depend on on internal departments because there you will have a roadmap that's fixed for like three years and you want to get on that, it's nearly impossible. So there it's better that you are an external client. So you, you go to, to a vendor and you purchase the things will be the best way off. So internal dependencies should only be on those things where you can get quick, quick reactions. Um, yeah, one thing that I mean, it's a bit controversial. I know in the in the in the agile dis discussions, um, should UX be part of the agile team or should it be like a cross-sectional thing? My personal view on that, I've tried both approaches. I think it's better to have a dedicated UX team, which is running in advance and trying out some things, developing concepts, ideas, and then. Um, yeah, we have in my current project we have this ambassador approach that actually we have the development teams and then one of the UX designers is part of that going to the dailies, but still we have the the UX team cross sectional and um, the the people the, the the designers do concept and design and prototyping and do these iterations because I experienced that. Developers tend to go mad when they have to wait for something and designers are like, no, I think we do another iteration, we do another iteration and 
it's not perfect yet. So um, I think there's a bit of a mismatch between designers and developers' mindsets. Designers tend to be very, um, let's say, perfectional, and that sometimes <laughs> leads to, to distraction. Um, yeah, how, how we test. So generally, we have, have the UX team, and we have also not only designers, we also have UX, um, yeah, UX testers, people that are very skilled in doing user research, user testing, and um, generally we do like, we used to take two to three sprints to, to test, learn, and improve. That's because, I mean, we, would, we will use one sprint where we, where we test uh, the, the, the product with, with users. We will then evaluate, um, prioritize the issues, and then the, the UX team will go and think about, okay, what could be the solutions to the issues we found? And um, also review that with testers and think about, okay, what do we think will solve the issues we found with, within the user testing? And then we will have another sprint where we implement it and then can test again. So generally our, our, fo uh, our, our goal is that we test every two to three sprints and then learn from it and iterate. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes you're just doing, I don't know, back-end stuff and you don't have really new things to test. So sometimes we don't do it like this, but that's more or less what we try to do. Um, one tool that we're using in, in the current project I'm working on and which I find really good for yeah, for pivoting and checking are we on the right track is we, we do the so-called super sprints. It's like it's five sprints that we plan roughly ahead. So we, we have a planning day. We go through the prioritized user stories and see what, what do we think we can do in the following five sprints. So this is very good to give the, the team uh, a clear, clear picture on where are we going. It's not just from sprint to sprint, but there's like five sprints in, in, in advance that the people um, know what we're doing. And um, second thing is it's great for stakeholder management, so you can tell management level, okay, in 10 weeks you're gonna probably get this or that. And then you also say them, okay, and then we're gonna have an internal release and then you can test it. So um, you don't have like continuous stakeholder involvement, which in some, some cases really can slow you down if you always have to present because, I mean, Generally, the executives are not like, okay, uh, they come to the reviews, but they want to have presentations and nice things and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and the good thing is that, like, let's say in this fourth sprint of every super sprint, you start thinking of what are we going to do in the next super sprint? And that's the time when you really sit down and you think about, okay, based on what we learned so far, based on maybe the market, so are there new products that maybe do something similar? Do we think we need to change something? Um, do we think maybe from, from what we have in our hands now? Because I mean, actually if you build a product, it's always like you think you know what you're doing, but then the first time you try it and you really use it, you find out, okay, yeah, well, uh, I thought this would be cooler, or maybe you find out, hey, this is way cooler than I thought it was. And so it's really good that you now here start thinking, okay, yeah, actually maybe we change the prioritization of what is going to come here totally because we found out something that, that changed our uh, initial assumption. And um, then you do this planning day and you think about what's gonna happen in the next five sprints. You then have a more or less fixed time frame, which doesn't mean you can't change anything, but it's like, this is more or less a guideline. I mean, if you ch want to change something within, it's, it's possible, but I mean, it's, it's like giving a heartbeat and it's, I found it really valuable. We did it the first time now and I think it's, it's really good too. Um, yeah, and I mean, generally in our projects that we do here, we have the launch and handover phase. So as we start up a project, then go through the product development. At some point, we're gonna 
handed over to the, the business unit that's, that's going to take care afterwards of it. So um, what we do here, at the end, we have a really growing involvement of, of the people that are going to do the continuous development afterwards, which also are our designers, our developers. So we take them at least two sprints before we do the handover. We take them into the team and start working together on that. Um, yeah, and you have to also plan that you have a fade out phase where probably people are still going to call you and then you have to answer questions. Why did you do that? Or do you have an idea on how to do that? Because generally, I mean, in the beginning you set up your your backlog and then you start thinking what, what are we going to do there? And yeah, probably you do like, I don't know, 50, 60% of the user stories and the rest is open, but you, you have ideas for that. You have maybe concepts for that. You maybe have no documentation, but, but it's in your head. And at that point, you want to make sure that this is transported to the people taking care of that afterwards. So this is then the handover launch phase. And yeah, at that point, what happens? We have some relaxing weeks. And then the next project starts, and it goes on like this again. So we are in the lucky position to be from time to time always in, in the phase of starting up something new. And we, I think we, we really have a nice job because we, we do the things that really are fun. And then afterwards, when it comes to, <laughs> to taking care and all, doing all these iterations, we are already doing something new, learning new things, which is quite nice. So when we did this Tolino project, I learned a lot of, about the book market. Uh, now I'm doing something completely different and learning, again, completely new things. So quite interesting. Yeah, and that's, that was my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep this microphone just back. So maybe you just repeat the question when okay. people are screaming. So who has questions to order? Here in the back. I actually have a question about your handover process. Um, so how much are the teams actually, is there like a strict border when it comes to the teams? So the question I actually have, if someone is in your team and you really, he or she really felt some love with the product you came up with and says like, oh, I want to be part of growing that product. Um, is it easy to change the teams from one side to the other and vice versa? Is it also possible to come from the core telecom into your organization to you know, be part of that innovation process? Okay, I, I repeat it. So it's about how strict are the borders. So if someone can go from the project phase into the product and vice versa. Yeah, it is definitely possible. I mean, um, actually we have I would say different, there are different situations. So one is we're starting up this product and it's getting it's going into another telecom business unit. Then for sure it's possible that someone says, oh, I would love to work for that unit. And I mean, if there's there's free, um, you say free, uh, Arbeitsplatz? Uh, <laughs> free, free workspace um, or free, the Stelle, Stelle. Positions. Three positions. For sure he can, can change. Um, we also often have the situation that we're not only working with interns so in these projects because um, generally there are like maybe 50% telecom employees, 50% externals. So it's often that externals continue working on that and going then to this business unit and continue working as, as externals. We also have the situation that some of the projects actually are spin-offs spin that really go, go outside of Deutsche Telekom. So then it's possible also for a Deutsche Telekom employee to say, I go with that, I'll be part of that startup now and um, work there. And, and some, some of the projects, as I said, are also <coughs> for external companies where we partner with those, that's a bit dif more difficult. But for sure, I mean, if you're doing a good job, probably they will take you. <laughs> more questions? Yeah. How long is the sprint, actually? Uh, two weeks.
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how broad or detailed are the ideas that you get? And, and could you give some examples of whether you can... Uh, where do you start? Where we start? So, uh, it's, so there's, there's different ways how to start um, our project. So uh, as we're working for Telecom Innovation Labs, which are technical, do the technical innovation. So sometimes it's like we have this new technology and we think we can do something great out of it and then we start thinking about a product. Sometimes it is, I don't know, Telekom Deutschland or products and innovation, which are the, the, the units that are managing the product say, oh, we need something there. I don't know, for the tablet, it was like uh, someone said, we need a, we need a tablet um, to launch with the booksellers. And then we said, OK, we do it um, and did this product. So there's different ways how to start, start this product, actually. OK, more questions. Um, yeah, when you, when you make a team, you can either choose to have it like in a project setup and have people like with, with two or three projects, or you can choose for like a corporate startup setup where you have a dedicated team. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do and why? Um, so we do the, the startup way. So I'm working now since one year in a project and we're sitting together all the time. It's really like a startup. So we have our dedicated working spaces. Uh, also, you lose a bit like contact to your normal peers because you're all the time there and it's really like, it feels like a company. It's really like 50 people now, actually quite big. And <laughs> yeah. Is it in stealth mode or can you say something about that? Uh, you can't, not, okay. Not really. <laughs> But <laughs> with something really secret, it will be the next big thing. <laughs> but I mean, it's 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 really like it's it feels a bit like a company actually. Do you decide on that it's going to be like that because I I try to have it like in a lot of companies that we try to create these dedicated teams and it's kind of a challenge to get the good people out of their normal world mm -hmm. into that team. You don't do this, right? You don't get people out of what you can become into a separate entity. Mm. Yeah, well, as I said, we have externals working for us. Yeah. We get internal people from different sectors, which is possible also. We have okay. people okay. from okay. that come from Bonn and work for dedicated projects for one year or so. It's like an okay. uh, Ausleier. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it is possible, and I think, you know, it really depends on... I mean, it depends totally on who's actually the business owner, who's, who's the owner of the project. So. Uh, there's people who get the right people together because they're very convincing, and there's people who do not get the right people together. It's I think you have to have the right right management people on board, and then it works. You had a question. Um, when you talk about testing, uh, with Google, you test what kind of tests do you do, and what is the first thing that you test? With? Like, you start testing with prototypes, or even before? Um, Repeat the question. Okay. The question was how we do the testing. So um, it's different in different phases. So generally in the very first ideation phase, um, we do workshops with users. We test, actually we have, um, we have a department here which is called UDI, User Driven Innovation. And they have a huge panel uh, here in Berlin, I think three to 4,000 people. And they can really quick get like 30 people together and then we do workshops. Maybe at that uh, phase, we, we show them paper prototypes and explain them what we are go going to do or what we want to do. And then they give feedback. We generate ideas with them. Um, they tell us how they use the products uh, that are comparable to what we want to do. And then at some point when we start prototyping and later do the, 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 the development and test uh, the, the actual product with people, uh, we generally we get like 10 people uh, on two days and then uh, doing the interview. So they have this nice room where <laughs> they sit with the person and you can watch from outside and they go through the product and let the people use and what they think and find out what works, what not. So it's very comfortable we have this infrastructure. So. <laughs> there was a question back there. So, I mean, we are working either with Jira or my project to to um, 
as ticketing systems where we do the, the sprint planning and uh, the, the user stories and the tasks that everyone's doing. As I said, we try to avoid um, having external, uh, so having people that are not co-located, but um, sometimes, sometimes you need to do that, but um, yeah, from my, from what I learned so far, this works if you have a dedicated team working on something that is a bit closed and you have like a scrum master and a product owner that's, that's taking care of that team. So um, having like a lot of people not being co-located and working on the same things, it's, it's a bit difficult. So we try to avoid that actually. More questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you are part of the innovation team, but um, you work in the first phase of the innovation of a new product or a new team. But how you promote in your department to have new ideas, to, to like the idea of board, for the just say the way? Because you mentioned, yeah, some, someone has had an idea, we have to do that, and you start to work on that. But the first thing to have this idea, how to promote that. Yeah, so Actually, I mean, this is a bit like the, where is the, the, uh, the division between what I'm actually doing as, as part of the product design and what Telecom Innovation Labs are doing. So we are more entering when it really comes to realizing the product and planning on how to do this. So the whole technical research, research and development is part of, of Telecom Innovation Labs and yeah, there they, yeah, I mean, they, they, they do research, they work with universities um, and I think it's mostly the idea comes from technical development. So let's say there's a new technology and then we start together with UDI to think about, okay, with this new technology or with, with these new, new possibilities, how can we think of a, of a product that actually um, can, can compete on the market or what, what can we do with that? So we're bringing in a bit more the, the user view on, on these new technologies. Okay, so I think there's maybe time for more questions later. And I would say thank you. Yeah.